You can't just say you're not supposed to because you don't have teeth that are five feet long. What are they talking about? Coach Greg, and today I am going to be discussing the Netflix documentary called The Game Changer. An enormous amount of requests asked me to talk about this. I am not a movie critic at all. But I am a kinesiologist and I do know a lot about food. I am going to explain in detail all the bullshit as well as the truths that go on in this documentary. Basically, most people after watching this show are going to be scared out of their minds about eating meat. If you're a keto dieter or a carnivore dieter, you must have hated this show. It must have drove you insane. Now you know how I feel when I read all the stupid comments from people writing me all their moronic ideas. Okay? You know how I feel. I watched this two times in a row, back to back, so I can get an unbiased, impartial view of what I thought. So basically, we have a former UFC fighter. He got injured. He started doing some research on how to get healed up. And he spent a thousand hours doing some research, just a normal dude, just read some books and what have you. And he came to the conclusion that I'm going vegan. Meat's killing us. Meat is the nightmare. Meat comes from the devil. Meat apparently is like fruit. Meat is like fructose. Meat is gluten. We can't eat anything anymore. Every single study you read, you can't eat anything. We're down to water. That's it. Water. You gotta have something. So I'm gonna go into detail and explain to you what is bullshit and what's reality. So they looked at these old bones from these gladiators from thousands of years ago and they discovered these gladiators were vegan. Well, if they are the strongest fighting, toughest guys and they were vegan, well, it must mean that vegan is the best. What kind of bullshit is that? It's stupid. If we analyze the dead bones of basketball players, we would be like, wow, they're all really tall. They all played basketball. They all dribble basketballs. Dribbling basketballs makes you grow real tall. If we analyze WWE wrestlers and looked at their bones, be like, wow, these guys are jacked and huge. It must be from all the traveling because they travel and fight every weekend in a different place. Cause and effect doesn't prove anything. So that meant a zero. Okay, ignore that. I follow a guy, it's called a vegan cyclist, because I'm a bike rider, vegan cyclist. He's vegan. He's been doing it for a long time. He does awesome. Does that prove that it's because he's vegan? No. So what did they do? In this movie, they picked maybe, I don't know, it was like seven world-class athletes who were vegan. And that proves that like vegan is the way to go. What about the other 7,000 who aren't vegan, who are doing amazing. It's easy to cherry pick a certain person and say, wow, look at the results that they got. It must work. Look at the proof. Proof is in the pudding. I do this, therefore it's awesome. What about the other thousand people that don't do what you do and are better than you? So just because they found these athletes that don't eat meat doesn't mean not eating meat is the way to go. So they had this ultra marathon runner. I don't know, he ran like 50 miles a day, something ridiculous like, right? So then they go, and I'm quoting, quote, word for word. As Scott hit the trails, I was confused on how his meat-free diet could possibly give him enough energy. Meat? Meat isn't for energy. Meat builds muscle. Everyone knows energy is mostly from carbs and fat. Meat is not really needed for energy. That is stupid to say, oh wow, how could you run 50 miles on vegan? I thought you needed all this meat. What do you think? Before a triathlon, we stock up on steaks? Do you think we're eating chicken breasts before we go for a run to give us energy? No, who does that? Nobody, so why would they even say it in the show? It just shows how little that they actually do know. Another quote, the perception was that protein is what sustains their energy bad being these runners. No, it's not. No one has that perception. Even the people watching this channel know that's bullshit. They know it's glycogen. It's carbohydrates with water it's in the muscle, and that gives us energy to do our thing. 
We already know this. So they listed some athletes who are vegan. Carl Lewis, vegetarian. Morgan Mitchell, 400 meter champion. And they had a strongman guy. And they had a weightlifter. Notice A, one of this, one of that. There's hundreds of these people in the world. So again, it doesn't matter if you pick one or two people that do this. It doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone. And they say stupid things. For example, the cyclist. Whoa, I could leg press 300 pounds and then I switched to vegan and my leg press went from 300 to 590 pounds for 60 reps. What are they trying to fool us with? You really think it doubles your strength to go from vegan to, or from meat eating to vegan? No, that's called progressive overload training over many years. She could have kept eating protein and got the same results. So just don't believe the crap that they try to tell you. A lot of people think you need meat. You don't need meat. I am not here to say all of you need to eat meat. You don't. You can get all the protein you need from vegan. That is true. I am impartial. I'm not trying to say do what I do. I know that for fact. So if you want to go vegan, be my guest. You can do it. The only thing is it's harder to get all your different essential amino acids. You need to eat a variety of plants. You need to eat a variety of foods. You need to be more diligent. So if you do follow a vegan diet, you can't just eat one thing. You need your lentils and your beans and nuts and a variety of everything to make sure. It's easier to get your protein if you include some fish and some chicken and some eggs and all this stuff. And of course you want vegetables too. Don't be all like all or nothing. I'm either vegan or I'm carnivore. Balance the two best of both worlds. That's the way to go. I preach balance. Every study you look at this and this and this and this. Oh, this gives you this and this gives you this and this is bad and this is bad. Why don't you take all the good of everything, combine it into one diet and shazam, you get a friggin' good diet plan. Why can't we just do this? Why is it all or this, all in, all out? Has to be one way or the highway. Balance it out. So they had Nate Diaz against Conor McGregor. Well, that made the show kind of cool. Nate Diaz, vegan, Conor McGregor, lots of meat. Connor lost the fight, and after the fight, he goes, man, I doubled up my stakes for the nine days out, and I lost my energy. I gassed out because of the stakes, basically, is what he's saying. He gassed out from freaking cutting a million pounds to make weight classes, or not training hard enough, or fighting somebody that was really good and getting tired. It's not from the steak, but in general, we already know. Extra steak isn't going to give you more energy to perform in a cardiovascular event. That's just stupid. You don't need extra steak. So that didn't make sense. Doesn't mean you have to have no steak. How about one steak and one vegetable? Balance it out. Simple. Everyone that watches is going to remember this. They tested these three guys who ate these burritos from plants. Then they tested the, their blood after eating burritos full of meat. And they looked at their blood and the plasma was cloudy after they ate the meat. And the cloudy means there's, there's fat in it. Okay. And apparently that's bad. They said fat from the avocado doesn't do the same thing as the meat. It doesn't cause that cloudiness. And apparently this cloudiness affects blood flow and so on. But really, blood flow is affected by blood pressure. It's affected by atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, basically ha having plaque formation on the arteries and hardening of the arteries, combined with having like high blood pressure and if your veins and arteries can dilate well. So obviously you want to be healthy and eating a bunch of shit all the time, like fast food, McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, all this stuff, bacon and eggs and junk and all this crap combined with not exercising is bad. It's inherently bad. Everyone knows it's bad. You don't need me to stand here and tell you that eating fast food is not smart. Bacon double cheeseburger with cheese and high fat and sauces and of course it's bad. But guess what? They never fed them a burrito with egg whites or a burrito with salmon or a burrito with haddock. They didn't even say what they put in it. I mean, we don't know. It might have been the fattiest hamburger on the planet, the fattiest steak. We don't know. So that to me is kind of cherry picking 
picking the foods they know are gonna affect the blood and doing this test and then saying, oh, look at this, it's meat that's bad. We don't know that for sure. It might've been that particular meat that was bad. For example, y'all know bacon ain't good for you. Don't eat the bacon, y'all know it. Y'all know a bacon double cheeseburger, bacon cheese, hamburger, high fat meat, bad. I'm sure it's worse than chicken breast. So eat the chicken burger. It's obvious, deep fried chicken and stuff, not gonna be as good. One of the football players, quote, I love fried chicken and I love Popeyes. It's like these are elite athletes and they still eat like shit. It's crazy how good they are and they get away with everything. They're comparing basically two types of people. The vegans who are ultra seriously about their health, perfect eaters, perfect exercisers, and then they do their blood tests and they get really good results and then they compare it to people who eat shit and say that they're bad and then they take their poor diets, put them on vegan, retest them and shockers, they lose weight and their cholesterol goes down and their blood pressure goes down and their health markers improve. That's shocking. No, it's not. They could have eaten any diet that was healthy. Throw in a blueberry once in a while. Eat a friggin' apple. Have a friggin', I don't know, a salad maybe for once in your life instead of a burger. Lose some weight and obviously your health marker is gonna improve. You don't have to go all in. No more meat. I just watched a show, I don't eat meat every mo anymore. Just have less of the shitty meat, less fattening meat, less crap. That makes sense. This drives me nuts. People have been asking me about this beet juice. Beet juice. It's apparently the best thing in the world now. They did this study and get this. People who drink beet juice before training, after one time, increase their bench press one rep max by 19%. Are you a moron? Are you that stupid? Does anyone, does even one person even one moron exist on this earth that's that stupid to think that that's possible. Oh, I'm walking in the gym. What's your bench, Greg? 500 pound, one rep max. Here's some beet juice, drink this. Load up the bar. What you got on there? 590? I can't lift 590. You can now, you had beet juice 19%. No, it's not going to help even 1.9%. 19%, I could take any drug in the world, you name it, and my bench press ain't going up 19%, nor is it going up 9%, okay? It doesn't matter what you take, it's not going to improve it. So they had these bullshit studies. They also said your cycling improved by 23%. These are mind-blowing numbers. It doesn't improve that much. I don't know how they designed the studies to show this, but they, the fact that they even would quote it shows me they're trying to trick the viewer. So then they talked about inflammation. Inflammation. Okay, meat causes inflammation, inflammatory problems. Oh boy. So it increases inflammation by 70%. So then they cut out meat and eat plants and then inflammation goes down. They don't say haddock, they don't say salmon, they don't say chicken breast, egg whites, they said hamburger, specific to that. What if you had, instead of the hamburger, you had haddock and blueberries and vegetables? Would that not improve your inflammation? I bet it does. You have your antioxidants, it's going to improve your inflammation. It's called a balanced diet. So rather than just think it's all in or not, it's meat or no meat, how about we select a healthier meat, add in some fiber, some vegetables and some fruit and get the balance of both worlds here. That is what you should be doing. Then they went in to talk about recovery. Meat's bad for recovery. The football players went vegan and then they improved faster. So they swap, swap out the meat again and they go vegan and of course their blood pressures go down, their cholesterol goes down, their inflammation goes down. Just add in more vegetables and fruit and eat less shit. It's over and over the same message here, folks. It's simple. Stop eating fast food and high fat 
crappy meat that you know is bad for you and eat the healthier stuff. Simple. And they go into heart disease and they talk about heme iron. Well, if you have one milligram of heme iron a day, it increases cardiovascular disease by 27%. And one hamburger has two to three milligrams of this. So if you even eat a half of a hamburger patty, you're already into the zone of that one milligram of heme iron. That's basically anybody who eats any amount of meat in the world at all versus an absolute completely strict vegan. Do you know what completely strict vegans look like and eat like and act like? Vegans are not regular people like regular. Find me vegans who are out doing drugs, getting drunk, who are fat, obese, lazy, and don't work out. Vegans are extremely health conscious people. They're probably not smoking. They're probably not getting drunk. And they're probably living a healthy, balanced lifestyle, except for they don't eat meat. I bet you you take that exact same vegan with the 29% or 27% lower heart disease risk or whatever it is, and you add in some salmon and some haddock and some chicken breasts, and I bet they still have a lower chance of death than those people eating Wendy's and cheeseburgers and bacon and whole eggs all day long. Does that not make sense? Half of this really is comes down to how fat you are. People who are overweight are automatically gonna have more health markers that are bad, okay? Anyone that loses weight, blood pressure goes down, your cholesterol gets better. So obviously this helps. So if you're eating meat and meat is the cause of obesity and you do anything <clears throat> to lower your obesity, you're gonna get healthier. Plain and simple, less heart attacks, less stroke, less cancer. And if you're eating crap all the time, chances are you're not getting enough fiber, you're not getting enough fruit, vegetables, and vitamins, antioxidants, and so on. So if you were to just switch to a healthier diet, a balanced diet, you would get all the benefits needed. So don't panic here, guys. Don't panic and think, oh my God, just watch this movie. I can't have meat ever again. Then they did a seven day challenge with firefighters. They were like, the number one cause firefighters death is a heart attack. Makes sense. Lots of people get heart attacks. They tested all these firefighters, made them eat this vegan food for a week. Guess what? Their cholesterol went down, blood pressure went down on average. It was amazing. They did all good. Guess what else happened? They lost six pounds. Well, was all this resulting from the, the fact they went vegan or because they lost six pounds? If they lost six pounds, they're obviously in a calorie deficit. They obviously were eating healthier. They're eating less crap and losing weight. And so how can you not just argue and say, well, it's the weight loss that caused this result. It doesn't have to be vegan. There's no proof that you have to be vegan. You just have to lose weight and be healthier. Then Arnold Schwarzenegger gets in the show. Yeah, Arnold. Arnold was like, I used to eat 250 grams of protein a day because I weighed 250 pounds. I didn't know better. I ate 10 to 15 whole eggs a day. I ate steak and so on. He also wasn't natural. Shocker. Now, do you think he's on all these drugs? No. My cholesterol's lower now than it ever was. He was on steroids back in the day. Steroids increase cholesterol like the bad cholesterol and lower the good cholesterol. He gets older and says, whoa, I want to live longer. That could be the cause, not the fact that he went vegan. Then they said colon cancer increases the risk even by three times as much, even with chicken breasts and like healthier meat choices. Yeah, but they didn't quote studies that showed that people who eat three servings of fatty fish a week live longer and have less heart disease and more mental health and so on. They avoid showing studies that show benefits of m meat or fish, okay? So they cherry pick studies to show what they want. Somebody else, some keto diet guy, could make the show and they call it the Game Changer Part 2. And it would be like every study to say, Anyone that eats vegetables is a moron and you need to eat all animal meats and that's the way to live longer. And I guarantee they would find some athletes that are doing that, that are amazing and studies to show it's healthier. And then you'd be like, I don't know what to do. Do I look at part one or part two? Listen to part three. Part three is me saying balanced diet. Do what you know you need to do. Eat the low fat meats, 
Stop eating a bunch of crap, junk food, and fast food, and eat vegetables, fruits, low-fat dairy, healthy food on average. Don't go crazy on meat. Stop thinking you need to eat two grams of protein per pound of body weight. If I eat 200 grams of protein in a day, that's as much as I'm, I, I need. I'm not eating five pounds of meat a day. I eat meat, but I need a ton of meat. It's balance, okay? It's balance. Then they talk, oh, well, early humans, they ate vegetables mostly and plants. They didn't eat much meat. I don't care what early humans did. Early humans were dead at 25. Shut up. Who cares what early humans did? And if obviously they ate more plants, they were early humans. Didn't have machine guns. Didn't know how to kill a deer. Were you going to chase it down and stab it with a rock? They didn't know what they were doing. Of course, they didn't eat a lot of meat. It was hard to get. Then they said, quote, Humans do not have any specialized genetic, anatomical, or physiological adaptations to meat consumption. That's bullshit. We have teeth. We have a stomach. I eat chicken in body, stomach, swallowed, digest it, build muscle. Yeah. How is that not an adaptation? Last I checked, I didn't eat chicken and barfed it up all of a sudden or had the diarrhea from it. I'm obviously adapted to eating meat and vegetables and anything that is supposed to be eaten by me. You can't just say you're not supposed to because you don't have teeth that are five feet long. What are they talking about? Then they did this stupid test on erections. And they gave them vegetables, basically, and then they tested how much erections they had during the night versus meat. And the meats had less erections. So what? I eat meat all the time and I have zero, as in zero erection problems. Then they did a test. Oh, look at this proof. We followed the keto diet and we followed the plant diet. And the plant dieters, well, they lost less muscle when they're dieting. They were eating more carbs. So when they did the test after with their body fat test, they weighed more. Why? Because water and carbs form glycogen in the muscle. So you're holding more water. So that when they do a test after, the test will show you lost less muscle because you have more glycogen. When you follow keto, you lose a lot of water weight. It doesn't mean it's muscle. So the test is flawed, period. Next, the take home message. You don't need to go all in and do one or the other. Don't follow a fad diet. Don't be like, I'm going vegan all of a sudden. Eat healthy, a balanced diet, vegetables, fruit. Forget thinking you can't have fruit because of fructose. Forget thinking you can't have a vegetable because it has fiber that you can't digest and you're gonna get bloated or there's some pesticide in it. Forget thinking that you can't have any meat because it's gonna kill you because it has something in it that's gonna inflame your body and cause your blood to be cloudy and you can't be an athlete because of it anymore. Most athletes eat meat and most people setting world records and high performance athletes are still eating meat. Doesn't mean that, oh my God, if we all went vegan, we're all gonna start setting world records. Don't follow a carnivore diet. Don't follow a keto diet. Follow a balanced mixed diet. One that you can do forever. Not one you can follow for three months and give up. One that will be able to be done for life. That's the key. Lifetime adherence, not a quick fix, not a band-aid, a diet for life. My diet plans are for life. If I followed every stinking study that's on the s internet, whatever, I would think I can't have anything. Gluten will kill me. I can't have bread. I it just goes on and on and on. So watch the show, see what you think, see if I gave a good report. Click subscribe. Please subscribe right now. The bell button alerts you with a swoosh. Then you can watch my show right away. Just press play. You don't actually have to watch it. I'm two weeks out from bodybuilding. I'm getting leaner and I still have enough energy to survive. If you want to watch further videos, one's blooped up here, another's blooped up there. Visit my website, gregdoucette.com for coaching. I do phone consults as well. Follow me on Instagram, Greg Doucette, uh, IFBB Pro, and I am out.